Islamic State or ISIS, Daesh, ISIL, whatever the hell you want to call it, say exactly the same thing every single time. They're establishing a state with structures that look like a state, function like a state, and as I said in the first um, part of my speech, they have the Weberian um, monopoly over the use of force, right? So all of these qualities that you need to tick off apart from international recognition, which they'll never get, they basically have. And I would trust those people that have actually been inside where they've been, rather than those people outside saying it is this or it is that. It may or may not be Islamic. Frankly, that's a debate which many people have had over the last month following that article in The Atlantic, right? But to question whether they're trying to build a state, they're very clear about that. So what do we want to call it? Do we want to call it a democratic autonomous experiment with Islam built into it? <laughs> David, I think Dave Phillips, hold on a sec, let's, let's give the speakers the opportunity to answer. I just want to underscore what Sally Muslim said. As I heard you very clearly, there is no security cooperation going on between Syria's armed forces and the PYG. Okay, thank you. Joanna? Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I just want to... Um, go a step further in terms of uh, the question that was raised with regards to ISIS. Um, actually, in terms of understanding, I think it's really important actually to understand why populations locally are mobilizing around and supporting ISIS. I think, I mean, I agree in terms of demonize, I mean, demonizing them and recognizing the horrific acts that, and atrocities that they've been committing is one thing, but I think it's actually really important, sort of on the other hand, to look at why, why are people rallying around and supporting them? I mean, you cannot look at this in isolation, and I think the historical context, um, if we look at illegitimate borders being drawn up, the Sykes people, for example, um, the invasion of Iraq, military intervention in Libya, these things contribute, yeah? really contribute to popular support for groups like ISIS. And I think it's not right to just demonize and, and be all and all. That's the attitude we take, but rather look more inquisitively um, as, as to why. Why are people supporting these groups to try to find a solution? So, yeah. Thank you. David? I'll, I'll just make one, one addition about social class. Um, you know, one line I heard over and over again uh, it, when I was there was that um, we're anti-capitalist, but we realize you can't get rid of capitalism without getting rid of the state, and you can't get rid of the state without getting rid of patriarchy. Uh, everybody else has tried it the other way around, and we're going to start with patriarchy. You know? um, and you know, other experiments didn't work. You know, for, probably for that reason. In terms of basic class um, analysis, uh, the, the simple thing to say is that they had an advantage that much of the ruling class ran away uh, because they were basically regime flunkies. So about half the half the land and resources sort of well, just lay there to be redistributed, and they were mainly redistributed to cooperatives. Uh, the major uh, initiative is that they're engaged in in terms of preventing the reemergence of, of classes is in terms of education, because in a lot of ways, the Ba'ath regime is really based on a, a, a rule of expertise and technocrats. Um, so there's an academy system where it's just trying to disseminate information as broadly through the population as possible to prevent any sort of monopolization of expertise that could become the basis okay. of a new class formation. Yeah. Thank so, so, so Thank you. You got. I mean, there's that lady never <laughs> dropped her hand. She's just. I, yeah, I think you're getting tired. So the the, the next the, you, you and then the, the gentleman the next. To you. So one. The late, late start with the lady and then the white in white t-shirt and then the gentleman uh, against what? Okay. Okay, the next. Azana Kurdistani, uh, President of Kurdish World. Uh, the main goal of ISIS coming from this year, exactly the uh, Mr. Professor has mentioned about that. United Fighting is that, is that work behind us, 
they just created the exact link that went into the country, uh, it's the United States, to supporting Turkish, to not let them to uh, crossing on the barrier of the Turkish uh, independence fight as to get the Lazatir. The main point, the main point, exactly the Lazatir. The Lazatir is exactly Islam. It's the, 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 aim, the purpose of Turkish to get to get across to see a port, to get the, open the door for Kurdistan. Only we are surrounded by five different countries. It is exactly you know everybody by Iraq, Iran, Syria, Iraq, and Armenia, Russia. Okay, please. please. The main point we demand to Mr. President Masai Muslim, please start to bring free for Lazaria. After Kobani, they destroy the Kobani because they don't want the people living there. Thank you. What's your we question? All behind you. What's thank your you. Thank you. Thank Just you. we want to start and not to start okay. uh, stopping the war. I have to move to the next one, please. Yeah. Next question. We are on the Syrian from Syria. My cousin he just died in the prison the last few days. I would like to ask Mr. Musa, what they want to do about the prison in Syria? There is 400,000 people prison in the Assad regime. And Assad is still booming the people and killing the people and Daesh killing the people. So what they want to do about it? About these people that have been forgotten. There is no school for the Syrian children as well the last four years. So what we want to do about it? Thank you. Okay, three questions to, uh, I think um, they, they directed that to you, so we, again we have to, so do you want to, or sh shall I start from the other end? Uh, do you want to say briefly uh, uh, one or two things about these questions? Yeah, well, the first question. What was the other? <laughs> okay, okay, uh, do you? Okay. Uh, well, I think the first question is uh, it was about uh, the Kurdistan and independent Kurdistan. So, yeah, uh, and now because uh, Kurdistan is divided between four countries, and each part of uh, the Kurdistan or Mesopotamia, they have different con conditions, and the people in each uh, part they should decide what the solution is to do. Of course, we are not against the independent Kurdistan anywhere, I mean, because if the people decide. But for our people, I mean, in Syria, we find, according to our conditions, to be in uh, one Syria, uh, democratic Syria, which recognizes the Kurdish rights, the Kurdish democracy, and the Kurdish institutions, which we have established in Syria. This is the solution we are. Uh, maybe for now we are uh, saying this is the uh, convenient solution for our people in Rojava. Of course, we respect the people what they decide for their parts. I mean, in northern Kurdistan, in southern Kurdistan, eastern Kurdistan, they can decide what they like. But for our part, uh, this is, is the solution we prefer now for our people. And the second uh, question, it was uh, for. Uh, maybe supporting Turkey, uh, I think uh, till now and along the 20th century, uh, there were uh, just interests, the uh, interest of the states, interest of some uh, elites of the people. I mean, they never thought of the people. It's just parts of the people, what they are saying, and maybe uh, you can say uh, capitalism or the others, they were deciding everything. But now the 21st century is the people's century, so they have to decide what to do. And of course, I mean, uh, uh, the people should decide. We, we, we trust on our people, and we cannot do, I mean, detect same things to them. Uh, because of that, I mean, still somebody is, is supporting Syria and Syrian regime. There are supporters of them according to their interest, could be uh, for some barrels of oil or so, some million of dollars, but they are forgetting the, the values of the humanity. And some of them, they are supporting Turkey or the regimes in the Middle East, which uh, we think it should not be, exist anymore. Uh, for the third question, uh, for the Syrians, of course, we are keen for all the Syrians. And uh, maybe we were uh, against this regime since 2004, 
uh, we could organize with uh, maybe uh, a lot of difficulties to organize our people. And with Kurdish people, we are just 15% of the Syrian population. Maybe we cannot organize the 80, 85%, especially they have different age, they have different cultures. But we are ready to help all the people. And uh, we are now uh, trying to coordinate with the, all Arabs, all the components living with us in the same area. We wish uh, one time if we were able to help the other Syrians and to uh, release them from the uh, maybe presence of the regime. Of course, we will do it. But uh, at this time, I mean, we are just defending our people and the others. Yes, we know the, the suffering of the other people in Syria, and we feel it, and we wish to be able to defend them also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, maybe let's go to this end. And David, do you, do you have anything, any answers or comments? What? Uh, questions? No. No? <laughs> no. David? Phillips? Yeah. We, we so the Kurds have been uh, rendered a historical injustice. The Treaty of Sevres said they could petition the League of Nations for independence. The War of Independence overtook that promise, and the Kurds were separated into four countries. They're now the largest stateless people in the world. Sorry, five again. Five, maybe more. So I think the point here is that uh, Iraqi Kurdistan now has a head start. It will become a, the next newest nation. I believe it will confederate with Rojava, and we're going to see a kind of virtual Kurdistan where commerce, education, and other kinds of cooperation exist throughout the region. Yeah, um, uh, to, the, to the Syrian uh, chat. Am I right in hearing that your, your brother died? My cousin. Your cousin, uh, okay. And he passed away. Okay, Ali al um, I think this is, is touching on a little bit about what I wanted to, um, to get on about in my speech, which is that there are other areas of Syria where people have suffered grievously for four years. Um, some communities which have been permanently destroyed. Um, some areas which I think have been ethnically cleansed and will never return to their original status. So one of the reasons I was questioning the applicability of what um, Rojava can provide for the rest of Syria is simply that it has not gone through the same ethnic cleansing processes that you've seen in other areas of Syria, or at least not to the same extent. Now, Kobane is a, is a, is a terrible tragedy, but if the Turks cooperate, it can be repopulated if the Turks cooperate. But what I'm saying here is that what you're essentially saying is we have to defeat the regime, somehow then find, or this is the royal we, I would say, the West, the Arab states, the coalition against ISIS, name whoever you want, if you want clarification on we, right, would have to try and have some mechanism for getting rid of the regime. How is that going to be done? Considering right now what we're seeing is closer cooperation with the regime's allies across the region, a situation in which there doesn't appear to be a diplomatic alternative other than to deal with Bashar al-Assad. So on the humanitarian front, I absolutely take your point. I think it's going to make reconciliation in some areas of Syria almost impossible for decades. Generally what we find when we research sectarian conflict, it takes two generations to heal those types of wounds. So we won't be seeing anything anytime soon in terms of reconciliation for prisoners who've been um, arrested, tortured, detained, have died in detention. Areas like Hola, Tremse, these places which have been cleansed, it's going to take 40, 50 years, I'm afraid. There won't be a quick solution to it. And unfortunately, you know, if, if there is a solution for getting rid of the regime, fine, but I don't see it. Okay. Thank you. So the next three questions, please, unless there is someone who should do. Okay. Uh, one question from there, and then the gentleman uh, next to the person in the white jacket is standing, and, um, and, 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 and thanks. Three questions.
Thank you. The next one. Yeah, my name is Adam, and I'm currently Jewish, but I've got a background in Jewish. I've got a question for Mr. Salah. What is the Rojava uh, connection with the Bashul? Do you have different aims in terms of the future? Okay. Yes. Yeah, my name is Ariel, and I have a public relations for the change movement in the UK. My question is actually to Mr. Salah Muslim. What do you want to be able to give that you would not copy what they have got in South of Kurdistan and South region? Because uh, if you look at the experience in the 1990s with the civil war and also the struggle at the moment that there was all Kurdistan and change who are trying to change whatever they have to go, that they are not copy pasting what we have got there with them. And today in the Kurdistan regional parliament, one of the yeah, remember, uh, remember Paolo from Goran, from Change Movement, was attacked and assaulted by two of the ADP member of Parliament. Because they have all the powers. And the PUK today is saying, no, we can do that to us because we've got the military, we've got the British Mafia. But Goran hasn't got a civilian attack and assaulted in the Parliament. Thanks. Sorry, there's also a question. Uh, really, I I would like uh, not to answer it, but uh, let me say briefly. Yeah, we read this report, and uh, this report exactly is the same of two years ago. We listened to them, and there was some ar the same argument. They didn't change, and actual things has changed in the Middle East, and there is ISIS, there is a fighting. They are not mentioning anything. So it's, we believe it's unfair report. It's the response. The, well, uh, I hear the, the, the report yesterday, I mean last night, but our meeting was before that, and they never answer, I mean, asked this question to us. So I think it's, uh, it's unfair report, and I think they will uh, find the proper uh, answer to it in the uh, near future. Maybe Michael also can complete what he won't say uh, because he knows the foreign ministry better than me. Uh, for the second question, uh, we are trying to have a good relations with the South and Kurdistan and KRG and all parties. We are in the same distance uh, with uh, all parties, KDP and PUK and Goran and uh, even the Islamic streams over there. And we are, of course, trying to get the help from them because we are brothers uh, at the end, I mean. Uh, but sometimes we have good relations. I mean, some parties are responding very well, doing coordinating very well, helping us, and some of them uh, making some obstacles for us. But I, I think it's, uh, in future we will have more coordination. Uh, for, you I mean, for the same thing for the future? Sorry? Do you have the same aims? Do you work for the same aims? Okay, you ask your question. No, so. no, no. It's uh, not no. the same aims. Maybe the aim is just because we are trying to uh, be answered to our people. I mean, more than uh, the same, but uh, maybe the liberation of our people or maybe the freedom of our people, the democracy. It could be different model. Maybe the demo models are different. Or the aims for democracy or for the freedom of the people is the same. The Kurdish rights, of course. For the third question, we are not going to be a copy of the Southern Kurdistan at all because we know and we have a big struggle in, uh, in, in Rojava not to have two armed forces because some sides are trying to get some maybe Asaish. Uh, I mean, uh, some parties are trying to build their militia, and so we, we are against it. And the people will decide, and because uh, we have YPG, it's a professional uh, forces defending all Rojava. They don't belong to any party or any components. Uh, they including Syriacs, they including the Arabs fighting together, side by side, defending their people. We don't want any other forces. So. We don't uh, like, I mean, the, uh, what has been experienced in, uh, in Southern Kurdistan to be repeated in our area. And of course, I mean, we have uh, different uh, ways also for that, because we are depending on our people's decision instead of uh, detecting on them. 
Uh, we are just, uh, uh, I mean, respecting their wish, their will. So this is uh, the succeed, and we feel that we are going to succeed in the mm -hmm. so, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like I have to uh, answer this question then, because Sale wants me to, and I, I will do it for you. Um, the report. Okay. Um, one of the reasons I ended my talk with the way I did um, is precisely because of reports <coughs> like this. The policy, which is advocated by the British government, which I don't speak for, but I, I can reflect the thinking, um, is such that the Syrian National Coalition is still the body which is officially supported by the United Kingdom, alongside the, the French, the Americans, the Canadians, uh, and about 50 other states, uh, including the Gulf Arabs. Um, the, the, the problem, I think, is that the mechanism to attach the PYD to that coalition, um, be it NC to NCB, um, whatever sort of combination of, of ties you like, has not yet uh, been put into place. Um, it's a difficult mechanism. There's no doubt that there are divisions between um, Salah Muslims party, some of the uh, uh, Free Syrian Army factions. Uh, it may even simply be that in two years' time, the Free Syrian Army factions that are represented by people like Salami Idris and, and various representatives, Khaled Hoja, these people, may not even be a player. And we will have to reflect that. The problem, I think, is that the Foreign Office never likes to ruffle feathers too much. Does that mean that thinking hasn't changed?